Nah, we should be live. Let me check my page. Yep. Yeah, I think that we live. We on my page? No, nah, we on my page. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, all right. Shalom. 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 All right, brothers from uh, Great Millstone, Atlanta, coming back at you with another uh, lesson through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. But first and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yahweh Shem Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and uh, peace, love, and salutation to uh, all you Akim out there that's pushing this truth and true sincerity. Uh, we're just coming back at you with another lesson, and the title of this lesson is called um, The True Depiction of the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, uh, which equals basically Yahweh Shai. Because mm -hmm. if you go to the letter J, all right, back in um, 1633, 1634, that, that letter, that, that name uh, J, that was a newly formed letter. So the, the, the name of the Lord cannot be uh, uh, Jesus, man. All right. And, and the truth is coming out about the actual depiction of the one who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, man. So <clears throat> go ahead and get, get into the lesson and our uh, Lord willing to be edified. So uh, any brothers got any precepts to start out with? This is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. <clears throat> For whom he did for no he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he, he already predestined the elect to be as the image of Yahweh Shah, be as his son, mm -hmm. receiving that uh, uh, everlasting inheritance that he gave to our forefather, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. So Abraham first. I got some. This is a uh, second Ezra six and uh, twenty. I'm gonna start at verse twenty seven. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. Verse twenty eight. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. So the truth is coming out about who God's chosen people is, because God has a certain chosen, uh, a certain chosen people. All right. And the truth is coming about coming out about who uh the actual depiction of the Messiah is because a lot of people believe that a lot of Christians believe that Jesus is Lord. You got Kanye West saying it was named Jesus King. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's G, the one you even call Jesus Christ is not the Heavenly Father. He has a father, and his name is Yahweh. Okay. And the and, and the most and the most high Yahweh gave the permission to his son, Yahweh Shai who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ to create the heavens and earth. Okay. So it's, it's a chain of command going off in the heavenly father, because there's certain scriptures where the one who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ was on the cross and he was saying, father, father, why are you forsaking me? Mm -hmm. You think he was talking to himself? That doesn't make any sense, man. So, you know, through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, through our apostles and elders and through their teachers, they're out here to uh, give you the truth on, the, on the, the real depiction of the Messiah, who he came for, what his real attributes are, and who he came to save. Because Christianity is saying that God can save anybody. Uh -huh. So you're telling me that God can save pedophiles and, and, and junkies Transgender. and, and transgenders and homosexuals? That doesn't make any sense. The one who you call Jesus Christ did not come to save a, a man who wants to be a woman, man. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Uh, if I can say too, uh, before um you get into your precept, you know, a lot of people will say, well, why does it matter? You know, what color the Lord is? You know, because they're under this impression that the Lord loves everybody, and we all were made in His image. You know, so on and so forth. But it does matter for truth's sake, because mm -hmm. if you beat into the people's minds subconsciously and present a certain image. That's what's going to uh, rule as our people thinking that the so-called white man is superior over us. OK, and I was watching um, 
a little bit of the interview uh, that the brother Gamal put in the um in the group text with uh, Blair Underwood, and basically he was saying the same thing, man. You know, it does matter. Color matters for truth's sake. And here it is. You got our people uh, believing in a so-called white Jesus. You know, every time they pray, uh, that white image is in their head. They grow up subconsciously, you know, uh, thinking that the so-called white man is better than us. When all actuality, he's the goddamn scum of the earth. Right. And the Lord is not dealing with the so-called white man because uh, there's num uh, there's numerous accounts in the scriptures uh, in the scriptures that give the true depiction of what our uh, our savior Yahweh uh, actually looked like. All right, but they they seem to uh, skim past those points and you know try to beat around the bush. All right, so we bring out these certain lessons, man, to pull down these strongholds. Okay, but look, you got look, um, look at look at the um, Jews over there in um. So like yeah, look at look at the uh Jews over there in the land right now. They right. look like these boys here that's on the picture, the image. Mm -hmm. So so the Lord is just like that over there. So right. Where they give uh, uh same sex parades and um all type of madness except the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. so I was was the word. That's one of the images of Yahweh Shah. He yeah. was he was he was the walking word, literally. Right. I got a precept, um, and this is to uh, follow up with uh, what a rock, what the brother of rock was saying about how um, people will say, "Well, why does it matter?" Well, here's the answer right here, John seven and thirty eight. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the point is, you got to believe on Yahweh Shai, as the Scripture has said, not according to what image. You like to put up because, um, you know, in that same interview, uh, you know, people like to say, uh, well, he can be Asian for the he, he can be Asian Jesus for the Asians. He can be white Jesus for the whites. Mm -hmm. Like because they'll, they'll make that argument like, well, he can be whatever color you want him to be. Well, no, because the scripture says the scriptures gives a, a depiction of him. So are we going to go based off of that? It says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Now, what does the scripture say? The scripture right. says that his feet are like brass burned in a furnace. Mm -hmm. So that tells you, that alone gives you enough evidence, you know, to, to, uh, to know what skin color he had. And it says, um, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the only way, really, well, first you got to be an Israelite to get this anyway. Right. But, you know, for for you to really truly understand this thing, you got to put off those images, like the brother Arat said, as far as um, Caesar Borgia. All that is white supremacy. Right. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the um, iconism. Iconoclasm. Iconoclasm to water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they, they really whitewashed. Uh, our history. So when they when they start doing that, Esau even more deceived the earth by by the images because history throughout history people keep what hieroglyphics of the uh, of the images like in Egypt mm -hmm. they got they got all type of pictures on the wall you you tell uh, uh, that's Pharaoh by the way that the crown is shaped and stuff yep. like that so. That's the same way with us. And speaking of iconoclasm, um, as far as that, as far as the Egyptians, you know, Esau used to cut off the noses. Yeah. All right. Because, uh, and that's one thing that he used to do to destroy that word. I iconoclasm means image destruction. Mm -hmm. So they destroy those images so that you can't identify who is who. Because Esau has power in, um, in confusing everybody. Yeah. You know, he that's what he's done is basically just threw throughout little he just mixed everything up. And he said, Yeah, you know, because if you ask Esau, he's the Egyptians, he's the Hebrews, he's the uh who else do they claim to be? Uh they claim to be everybody. Yeah, everybody yeah, except for the damn devil. Right. You know, and I got a scripture on that. Huh. This is uh first back at least three and eight, three and forty-eight, and they laid open the book of the law which is basically the scriptures, 
-hmm. wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of his images. And that's where you get iconoclasm, man. Mm -hmm. Like you see uh, the book Russian Russian Icons, the book that's you know, probably like two days, two decades ago, it's probably like thirty dollars. But if you go look on Amazon or eBay, it's in the hundreds, of, it's in the thousands of dollars. Yes, and this is what the so-called white man did during the time of the Renaissance period. All right, that's what he did with Cesare Borgia. Um, he he switched the image of Cesare Borgia and tried to paint it in the likeness of the Messiah, man. And that's what our people are going so gung ho about. If we go out. And do a survey about if we if we say that Jesus is so-called black, our own people will fight us, man. Because mm -hmm. the scriptures say the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the Lord <clears throat> gave the earth over into the so-called white man who was wicked because he was created to be the wicked, okay, for a certain period of time. So it also mentions in Revelation 20 that he would deceive the earth. So he's deceiving the earth by this uh this soft this soft ass, sweet ass, uh, Jesus loves everybody's spirit, man. I got you, man. This is Joe. Chapter, that's what funny you that you said it too, because I, I, I seen the um article with this uh, even like, like the Uber driver, he just picked them up right at the late night club, mm -hmm. and then the, it showed on the camera that the Edomite was just stalking the driver, man. Mm -hmm. He sat in the front seat and just stalking the driver in, in a weird way. Then he started filling on the driver, and the driver had to pull over, put him in the chokehold, and then get, get him out the car because the dude was just straight off, man. Mm. That's crazy, man. Uh, Joel chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked who covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And that's what he did. He covered the face of, of Yahweh while Yahweh was shot. Because mm -hmm. remember, the Lord said when he was on the scene, if you see me, you have seen the Father. Right, yeah, and that's really the uh, that's really the the biggest form of blasphemy that you can do is to um, you know play is to play with the image of your house shy to to taint the image of your house shy. Well, yeah, because the Lord said uh, in Revelation, he said, if you, if any man add unto these words, mm -hmm. then he he should be uh, uh, destroyed, so to speak. It was a place, so like, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 the players, yep, yep. I got the definition of iconoclasm. It says, this is a basic search. It says, the action of attack of attacking or assertively rejecting cherished beliefs and institutions or established values and practices. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it goes beyond, that goes to show you that it goes beyond images because it yeah. says what? Uh, they attack practices and beliefs. So Esau... You know, because uh, because he had to uh, cover himself and who he was, then he he also had to basically um, hide who everyone else was. Yeah. You know, and basically basically get what I'm trying to say is he had to get us from from uh, our heritage and our culture, and which really was prophecy pursuing the uh, Jeremiah 17 and four. You know, mm. but basically. Our, our customs and our culture and our language was all stripped away from us from the social yeah. white man. And that's that's a part of that iconoclasm, you know? Yeah, like we watched Good by Uncle Tom and Clap for well, like roughly three weeks ago. And that's mm -hmm. how they did it. They stripped you of identity. They came on a slave ship. They beat the shit out of you. They they made you shave your beard off. They they shaved they shaved your head to the point where your, your head was bloody because they shaved so much skin off your scalp. Then they gave you plantation Christianity. And that scene of Goodbye Baton, you had the Edomite that was spitting a bunch of gibberish. And then you had Negroes in the back, like, yeah, yeah, this, this is the gospel, you know. Right. And then they had, they had another scene in Goodbye Uncle Tom where they had Negroes jumping up and hooping and hollering. That's what you get in 2019 with these pastors jumping up, do crip walking, doing jumping jacks, uh, blood walking, all the other shit. You know what I'm saying? Doing false miracles. Because that's what our people believe in. They they um that description, uh Isaiah 30, they like to hear smooth things. They like to hear all oh, that God is gonna save everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 why our apostles and elders call it plantation Christianity. That's why you have to go um watch Goodbye Uncle Tom. 
And um, a brother from uh, that brother up there in um, uh, Rochester, New York, GMS Solomon Assembly, he did a video on Sakari. You know, Alazar had went to this church in uh, mm -hmm. Dallas, Texas, and he confronted um, both them jeans uh, church. And they was they was on the same tip. Oh, we gotta love everybody, but the scriptures say otherwise. Sakari, as much as we get on this nigga, okay, he broke Romans nine down, Romans nine down the right way, and he was saying God hates. But this is the mentality of our people that as as long as you know, as long as our oppressor can kill you, shoot you, rob you, castrate you, mutilate, mutilate you, you're supposed to forgive him. And that's nowhere in the Bible, man. Right. Our people have a, a, a totally backward mind state when it comes to the Messiah's uh, the, true depiction, what he, what, how he how he how he acts, and who he came for. Because we've been beaten for so long, like the scripture says in Jeremiah seven and seventeen and four, we're discontinued for our heritage. So we don't know who we are at the end of the day. That's why you have the prophets. Right. Yeah. Hey, if I can say too, uh, to the point of um, the iconoclasm, um, it, it was saying that uh, they strip away your customs or something to that effect. You can reread it, Bob Kusha, mm -hmm. if you still got it up. Well, uh, what, what, it, it was saying practices, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, um, mm -hmm. one sec. Um, iconoclasm is. Uh, it says the action of attacking or assertively rejecting cherished beliefs and institutions or established values and practices. Yeah. Yeah. Established uh, values and practices. You know, at one point, our people, we had the Passover. OK, we had the Day of Atonement and all of those things. And what Esau has done has um, totally stripped that away from us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we all know it was prophecy. And the Lord just used Esau to do it. Now, what he fed, uh, have uh, fed our people Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, uh, Easter, you know, because you have to, uh, uh, everyday ordinary Jake about the Passover or the Day of Atonement, you know, they'll look at you like you got three heads, okay? Yeah. Because Esau has done a great number, man, of, of just stripping uh, not only the image from us, but our customs and our practices. And who we are as a people, man. Yeah. Yeah, not, that's true because our people will watch our people get into Easter and they'll watch the Ten Commandments with uh what's that white boy's name? Uh Charlton Heston. And they'll think that's the Israelites, man. Right. It makes sense to tell you, so-called white people suffer from melanoma, man. Ain't no way in hell a so-called white man was gonna be in Egypt for four hundred years building pyramids and he ain't gonna die from skin cancer. Right. right. So that's a, that's the a spirit of truth. The Lord gives you a spirit of common sense to be like, well, the one the, it, it talks about in Matthew two, the second chapter where yeah. Yahweh Shai went to Egypt. Well, and he, he, like, and he, oh. he he hit amongst those Egyptians, and the Israelites were scattered across the four corners of the earth. So you have so Israelites were scattered in Egypt, different parts of Africa. So when Herod made that decree, which historians call the the murder of the innocents. You have to believe that the spirit of common sense ain't no way a so-called white boy is going to fit in, in <laughs> with the Egyptians down there in Africa, man. Right. That don't make no goddamn sense, man. Right. Right. Or oh, he's going to be uh, portrayed as a, 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 bi a bino. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, it's, it's crazy that you, it's the spirit that you brought that out because I was actually holding that account uh, to, the, to, the, to make the point that if uh, our savior Yahweh Shai was a so called white man, he would have stuck out like a sore thumb amongst the Egyptians, man. Yeah, right. when you go into hiding or in incognito, you go amongst people where you blend in and you can kind of play the background. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? it wouldn't have made sense to send um, uh, Cesare Borgia, you know, to a damn Egypt where if Herod was looking for him, he'd go right to his ass. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Gonna just, out. in the midst of a bunch of tall ass Africans, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hamites, exactly. Um, I'm gonna bring bring it out, you know, for edification's sake. Uh, Matthew two, and I start at verse thirteen. It says, "And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, 
and take the young child and his mother, the young child, speaking of Yahweh Shai, it says, um, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child and destroy him. All right. So, um, yeah, man, to the point, if it was a so called white man going amongst the Egyptians, that wouldn't have been a, 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 a great plan, man, to send them amongst so people that they don't giveaway. even look like. Say it again. It's a dead giveaway. A dead giveaway. There you go. Um, verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Hey, that's that's common sense, man. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because um, and and you know, this is really a um a discussion just going back to that uh that um interview that that uh we brought up with Blair Underwood, mm -hmm. which if, if brothers haven't checked that out, uh that's a good that's a good uh uh, interview to check out because basically that's the first time on on television that 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 issue or that topic was discussed uh -huh. and that was back in 1993 but the point i want to make is that goes to show you that the same arguments we're making and the same argument esau was making is still relevant esau right. was making the same arguments that they used to make that i mean it's like esau was making the same arguments back then that they still make today. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's about what he does, not about how he looks. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, it's about what he did, about his legacy, not about how he looks. Uh, mm -hmm. what else? Um, uh, they try to say he had olive skin. Olive yeah. black. Well, if that's the case, green or black. if that's the case, why, why, why is uh, Andrew Jackson on the dollar bill? Why is it mm. uh, 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 a Nat turn on the dollar bill mm. for trying to free Jake for doing a good cause? Yeah, man, I got I got mm. a picture of uh, if I can show, man. This is the picture that was found in Rome about three years ago. It says the depiction of Christ found in Italy, aka Rome, aka the nation that crucified him. And I don't know if you can see it, man, but that doesn't look like a so-called white man to you, man. Right, us can see it. All right, he had white woolly hair and he had brown skin, man. All right, and this was found about three years ago. All right, so that is not the depiction of the world, the one you call Jesus Christ. Yep. All right, real name Yahweh Shai, man. And people know, man. They they make you know like they got these little parodies. Remember on Adult Swim, they had this this nigga that uh, had yeah, a show Black called Jesus. Black Jesus. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He just hitting you upside the head, but Jake think it's funny. You know, mm -hmm. I had a song called Black Jesus, and, and and niggas think that the one who the, the world really calls Jesus Christ is supposed to be smoking blunts and goddamn getting drunk and fucking with hoes and just doing all types of sh criminal street activity. Mm -hmm. They just throw it, they subliminally throw it in your face, and you niggas just don't pick up that idea. But when we're out there on the highways and byways, you just like, oh, them niggas is crazy, man. Them niggas is wild. But really, mm -hmm. Esau is just giving it to you that the Messiah was a so-called black man and we can back it up through the scriptures. Yeah. And if I could say this too, uh, when, when, when you niggas, when you, when you do believe that so-called Jesus is black, you're looking at that image with, uh, y'all seen that painting of dreadlock, dreadlock Jesus. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's in every black household. That's in a lot of black households, yeah. you know. You got Jesus with the dreads, Jesus with the silky perm hair. Silky perm, yeah. You got the black yeah. Jesus with the silky perm hair. So he <laughs> doesn't look like that, man. You know, hey, the scriptures say, which we'll, we'll we'll get in a second, but the scriptures say he's a man of war. Neither of those images or depictions look like a a, a man of war. Now, of course, even um, even the image. The image that, that we bring to camp and that we show at camp, okay, just to, just to uh, put a disclaimer out, we're not idolizing that image, yeah. okay? We're not stuck on that image, you know? That's, I mean, that's the closest thing, uh, uh, that's the closest depiction 
that that you know we uh use yes the duality because you got evil going out here saying that this is the image of the lord when really the image of the lord is this that's just taking up you know for for the truth sake. right so the the image that that you know we bring to camp we're, we're not we're not stuck on that you know we're not saying we're not saying that yeah you gotta you gotta bow down to this image you know because ultimately we haven't physically seen you how shot you know we haven't we haven't you know hey if, if we were to see you how shot right now in this flesh we might we might give up the ghost right because of his because of the, the the his majestic presence you know but uh but you know the that's just a, a, a more accurate depiction you know just 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 as a disclaimer that image that we use is just a more accurate de depiction of of you know uh whom the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ. You got it. Uh, goodbye. Come on. This is Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. Mm -hmm. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning. And his, you know, that's that's talking about mm -hmm. the wisdom that he had, the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. Mm -hmm. polished so that, that goes to show you. Now, everyone knows, you know, and, and this is a cut. This, this is the main cut that we use. We go to, we go, we can go to Daniel 10 and 5, or you can go to Revelations 1 and 13, 1 and 14, you know? But that brass, we all know brass is what? Brown. You know, so you can't get around that. There's no way that you can get around that. And white woolly hair, everyone knows, you know, woolly hair is is the texture of hair, is the grade of hair. When when have you ever seen a, a, a cracker with woolly hair? Right. You know? Matter, matter of fact, they have you, you got so called white white people that have afros, man. Like mm -hmm. that that's from countries like Montenegro, yep. Albania. And those are Jake. They be man. Jake. They be having that. They be having more hair than me, man. Curly red hair. Curly, curly hair and shit. Curly brown hair. Curly black hair. But those are Jakes. That's why we bring you the whole doctrine, the whole gospel of the Israelite foreigners, man. Because if you got people that look like so-called white people, all right, and they they have features of a ne a so-called Negro, those are Israelites, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Hey, hey. The um the guy Blair Underwood in the interview he brought that point out um when he was saying it was three things you know that you have to look at as an indicator and the main one he mentioned was lineage okay so just because we're bringing out the fact of you know the true color or the image of your house shy um that's not uh what we use to determine whether a person is you know an Israelite or not you know. The scriptures tell you to uh, try the spirit by the spirit, okay? So that's another disclaimer out there. They think we just uh, all for black people and we we hate white people. When in all actuality, it's not a black and white thing. Yeah. It goes back to uh, to your lineage. If yeah. you uh, go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, no matter what color you are nowadays due to uh, the, the spreading of the Israelites and the mixing amongst the other nations, you know, you could very well be an Israelite, but this particular topic here, you know, we're getting into for truth sake, man. So our right. people can stop subconsciously believing in an image that further puts our people in a hole and indoctrinate to the point where you look at another so-called black man and you hate his fucking guts, mm -hmm. you know, subconsciously. But when you see a white man, you straighten up and you give him reverence. That's that's that has something to do with the image as well. Yeah. And we all know um that the curses in Deuteronomy 28 speaks about us having an evil eye towards our own brother, mm -hmm. you know. Uh but it's it's implanted in Jake from a very young age, man. Yeah. If uh if our people grew up with the real image or the depiction of what it describes and like the brother just brought out in Daniel 10 and uh or Revelation the first chapter, we would probably but more than likely, look at our brothers in in a very different light than what we do now, man. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. you do. That's true because our people have Stockholm syndrome, man. Like I said, yeah. if Christ, black Christians, they don't watch, they don't sit down and watch two hours of Goodbye Uncle Tom, man, because it'll tell you a lot of how our people um, got broken down, how the men got uh, demasculated. Mm-hmm. The same reason why the nigga woman feels like she has a complex over the so-called black man is because of slavery, man. Mm-hmm. Everything is, mm-hmm. is, is, is backwards and upside down, but our people, they just take it on face value. You yep. know, they believe that. And that's another that's another lie, too, because people believe that the Messiah is the Heavenly Father. And that's that's a damn lie, man. A lot of people are indoctrinated with folly. And here it is. The truth is coming out. But they just fan their hand. And we just had a class that on that yesterday about Ezekiel 37 of how we're on the street corners with a plank of wood, all right? We're out there with so-called dresses, uh, which people think. We're out there every week being diligent, telling you to come back to the Lord, giving you the true description, and, and people are just walking by. Meanwhile, they'll go to the church, and and, and, and the, the Christian pastor, he can, he can uh, sprinkle you with so-called holy water. He can do all types of sexual acts with you in the side, inside the church, and you don't think anything of it. But we come with you with the hard hitting facts of the scriptures. Jake is like, well, I don't know about that. You know, so that, that's on Jake, man. Mm-hmm. I got something. This is uh, Jeremiah 2 and 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Yeah, so basically going into the, the character mindset of you Israelites. Is the brother still on? I don't think so. See if he's still on. Oh, I, I think he came. I think he came back up. Um, you good? You you on up? Check that clip, man. Have to join him back in. All right, there you go. Okay, come, come. Yeah. So uh, going back to what I was saying is, um, uh, our people are, are you know they have a slave mentality. Okay, they have an affinity for the so-called white man. You know, which also another thing is. You know that whole um, image of, or no, the uh, the how do I say the um, the words white and black also play a part in that deception as well. Mm-hmm. You know how black basically means uh, dark, void. You know all the all these negative things. Yeah, evil all these negative things, but then yet white means pure. So our people tend to carry on those same, as a matter of fact, if you Google, if you Google, uh, they did an experiment. Um, it's like a, a doll. If you type in um, baby doll, kids uh, experiment, Baby mm-hmm. doll children experiment. If you brothers have ever seen that, I they take they take a baby doll and they put it in front of you know a white or black you know young child and they ask them which doll you know whether it's a white doll or it's a black doll they say which which doll is good. You know they'll hold up they'll hold up a two dolls a white doll and a black doll, but then you have the the black kids basically pointing at the white doll. This doll is good. You know, and they and one of the babies said, they said, which one would you rather be to the black to the black child, so called black child, and the black child pointed at the white dog. Uh huh. Yep. So yeah. That, they, they, they'll have some slack. Go ahead. Go to show you that confusion that Esau is deceiving our people. Why? Wow. You got some my rock. Now I was just gonna say, um, to add to the point, they'll ask some like, which doll is more beautiful? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and they'll pick the white doll. Mm-hmm. Over the, over themselves, um, just because of this same fact, you know that we're going into everything that is associated with the so-called black race is negative connotation. But when it comes to the so-called white man, which they are really the black people, you know, yeah. but they want to. Uh, it's a play on words. They want to associate them themselves with pure, you know. Uh, As a matter of fact. Uh, I, Right, I, I, even the kids, man, growing up, that's when it's branded into you, because um, studies show in the first five years 
of a child's life are the most important uh, years. That's when they pick up on and associate good and bad and things of that nature. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Because, yeah, those those uh, first five to seven years, those are the pivotal. You know, those are the years that that really you shape your um, your opinions. And that's the way that's when you kind of start to shape your perception. Of right. It. You know, you got something, Kabash? This is uh, Lamentations chapter uh, four, verse seven. Our Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. And, and that's talking about uh, us as a nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. we, we were we were the Lord's holy people who he ordained to be holy for a minute. And then we, we fell because that's why Jeremiah wrote uh, the book of Lamentations. Mm -hmm. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaving to their bones. It is withered. It is become like a stick. So that, I mean, that, that's another image too as well. Mm -hmm. That's on us. Uh, and I got something too, man. Mm -hmm. You know, when um, the scriptures say the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. So you have all these scientists and all these Edomites who try to classify who you are instead of going to the Bible, instead of going to Genesis, the 10th chapter. This is uh, Johann Friedrich Blumenbach from Wikipedia. Uh -huh. It says, uh, May 11, 1752 to uh, January 22nd, 1840, was a German physician, naturalist, physiologist, and anthropologist. He was one of the first to explore the study of the human being as an aspect of natural history. His teachings in comparative anatomy were applied to the classification of human races, of which he claimed there are five. Now, the Most High has 18 nations with the Israelites being up top, but the white man said there's only five. All right. So it says what she claimed were five, Caucasian, Mongolian, Malaysian, Malayan, Ethiopian, and American. So he was the, a member of the... Uh, God is in school of history. So that goes to show you Esau is a damn dummy because the, here it is. He says this is a God-fearing country. He swears his hands on the Bible and says in God we trust. He says in God we trust. But according to this research, he goes by Johann Blumenbach's research of five um, historic, hip, hip, five races when it's yeah. actually set 18 nations in the Bible, yeah. you know? Yeah, because uh, when you go into it, that uh, that guy, Johan Blumenbach, he was uh, basically responsible for uh, uh, the labeling using the labeling of people using colors. Right. You know, he was the one that that, you know, started that whole white, black. And uh, I think one of them was even yellow. Yeah, probably was. Uh, this, uh, yeah, let me go back to it. It says. Uh, Mongolian, so you have to believe that's a so-called Asian being yellow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is just completely off, man. That's right. Anybody got anything else? Uh, let me see. Uh, Get a couple more. Let me go to John. Um, let me see. Give me one second. This is John chapter 14, verse uh, 9. It says, Yeah, what shall I say if unto him? Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then show us the Father? So if you see me, how shy? And we see him through the scriptures, man. All right, Revelation 1, 13 through 15, Daniel 10, 5 and 6. If you've seen the Father, if you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. You've seen, you've seen the Father being portrayed in, in Daniel what, 7 and 9, the Ancient of Days. Okay, so that that's a true depiction of the one who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, and the mm -hmm. world is in for a huge surprise when our Lord and Savior Yahushai comes back. All right, as like mentioned in uh, Isaiah sixty-three, man, he's coming for Basra. You so-called white people, man, you mm -hmm. so-called white people 
which were called the Romans back during his time 2,000 years ago, impaled him along with two-thirds of our people. And those are the same ones here on the face of the earth today that believe that the Messiah is a so-called white man and his name is Jesus. But they're in for a surprise. That's why the scriptures say in Luke, let me get this one right in Luke right quick, man. Uh, um, Luke, um, say Luke 21, I think it's uh, 25. It says, uh, it said Luke 21 and 26, man's hearts failing for them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So there's going to be a lot of jakes that's going to be doing that uh, Fred Sanford thing. Um, I'm going to have a heart attack because the Lord is going to come back and you thinking that some soft ass, bitch ass white man coming to bring flowers and singing We Are the World with Michael Jackson. <laughs> and the scriptures say he's an austere man. Okay. So our people are in for a surprise along with the so-called white man. So people are just going to be giving up the ghosts in that time, man. You can only imagine because you have to put these things into a perspective of how Jake and Esau, two thirds of our people, two thirds of Jake and Esau are going to just, they, they, they think that he's going to come down with cotton candy and he's going to give right, more rights to homosexuals and pedophiles. Well, sure. The, um, yeah. well, what's on the application for a so-called white man these days? Caucasian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't say nothing about your house stop being a Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Or his lines go back to the uh, Caucasians. So that's another point that the image is, <laughs> is nowhere near Caesar Borgia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which really their main their main thing is that he could be anything, he could be anything but a so-called black man. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so that's why they use that thing. That's why they always say. That's their that's their way of saying their when they say his image doesn't matter. In other words, they're saying, "Nah, he ain't black." Well, well, in that too, they haven't read the whole scriptures. They haven't read the book. They haven't ate the whole road. Because when you read the whole, I mean, from Genesis, the whole Bible, man, it talks about Israel. It talks about the atrocities of Israel. It talks about mm -hmm. the up ups and downs of Israel, the future of Israel, the enemies of Israel. So for you to come to that conclusion saying that it doesn't matter, that's just a spit in the face. Mm -hmm. Because a, a lot went down for, for Yahweh Shah to come and lay down his life for uh, the elect sake. Mm -hmm. he's and that he's, he's just anything that's, you know, yeah, that's blasphemy. Because that's that's the modern day mentality. The Christians come as you are. Yeah, they think that Yahweh Shai, the world, and he called Jesus Christ is accepted any goddamn body, man. Mm -hmm. And there's various scriptures in the New Testament as well as the Old Testament that cuts cuts down the whole "come as you are" spirit or uh, believing uh, accepting everybody, man. How are you gonna, how are you going to accept everybody? According to Psalm 83rd chapter, everybody outside the nation of Israel has something to do with what we're going through right now. The, the fact that the rent is too goddamn high, okay? Our people are killing each other. They don't know who they are, okay? They have to, they're subject unto payments. Yeah. And you're thinking everybody can be saved when they right. have even, even Even uh, his own people yeah. can't be saved. The two thirds ain't gonna be saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 70 disciples left inside because he said he broke down a parable to, to the crowd that they got offended at. The mm -hmm. flesh of his flesh and drank the blood. I mean, he was talking about the scriptures, though. Yeah. So yeah. everybody, but they didn't get it, and they, yeah. they, they got offended, and they left. Yeah. They put down their plow. Uh, I, got, I got another scripture. This uh -huh. is uh, Revelation uh, chapter 1. And verse three, and this is how you found out the true depiction of the, the one you call Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. real name Yahweh Shai. It says, Revelation one and three, blessed is he that readeth and that keepeth, and they that keep him, that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Really, the, the, the description of Yahweh Shai is actually prophecy, man. Yeah. All right, we're true. telling you 
of who's coming before it happens. We're telling you that a so-called black man is coming to bring vengeance on the earth, man. That's really prophecy. And mm -hmm. I, we know that from, from the induction of slavery, our people did not read. Yeah, because yeah, cause we look like them too. Yeah. I mean, matter of fact, I got Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 16. It says, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. Mm -hmm. And we're from different tribes, and Judah's the head tribe, but we 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 are we are the same as our Lord and Savior. Yeah. So how much more he, him coming back looking just like us? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like we're the only ones doing this work. We're the only ones that's in the spirit, <clears throat> the prophecies doing diligent research. Yeah. We started from the apostles and others on down. We we the only ones. Esau ain't going out there doing that. Yeah, that's true. And he and the Jews run runs the world. Yeah. So-called Jews over there in the land run, runs the world. Just like we had class yesterday. Where's the other eleven tribes for you, so-called Jewish people, man? Where, where's Issachar, Zebulun, Naphtali, Asher, uh, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben? Where, where's those tribes at? Right. So that goes to show you that the so-called white man is a goddamn liar, man. He's cap. That's right. His neck, <laughs> neck is this is showing. Because the Lord said he's going to raise up his elect, set us in order uh, 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 in these last days. That's prophecy. I got some. Jeremiah 4, 14 and 2. Judah mourneth in the gates thereof language. Language, they are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jeru Jerusalem is going up. Now, you know, like uh, Brother um, Kabash was just saying a couple minutes ago, all you got to do is go through, all you got to do is figure out who or, or what what color were the were the Israelites, mm -hmm. you know, for you to figure out what color or nationality Yahweh Shai was, you gotta go into you gotta prove secular history. Yeah, well, well, not even that. Yeah, not even that. Not even that. You just gotta you just gotta basically know uh, uh, know these precepts, be able to break it down to to understand. The uh, the the skin color of the Israelites, yeah. you know, because Rome was ruling in that known world back then, over there in the east. Mm -hmm. That was the known world. It wasn't no Western America. I mean, Gatham was over here, but it wasn't like the known world over there in Rome, where uh, where Yahusha was, and we dwelt amongst the Romans. Yeah. So, what color was the Israelites? Opposed to the Romans, yeah, right. Because we already see the statues of Alexander the Great, and you still got Esau over there claiming that they, they the Greeks, and, you know, they they love they love for Alexander the Great. They show, and they 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 know that they are <laughs> those people that look just like uh, Alexander the Great. Yeah, it's like a Mark Star says, you know, according to Leviticus thirteen chapter. So-called white people suffer from leprosy, man. So why would the Lord, why would the heavenly Father send His Son to the earth being leprous, man? That that totally contradicts the scriptures, man. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you send? Why would you send a man who was perfect on the earth of a man who has a, a, a melanin deficiency? That doesn't make any yeah. goddamn sense at all, man. Exactly. Like I said, when you come into this truth, when you come into this word. You have the spirit of common sense to decipher things. Like we mentioned of how Matthew, the second chapter, that Yahweh Shai hid in Egypt. He wouldn't be a damn leprous bastard, man. <laughs> right. Okay. That doesn't yeah. make any goddamn sense at all. But and I don't think Esau can fast for 40 days before the next day. I don't think so either. I don't he couldn't survive in Egypt for 400 years, man. Shoot. 430 man. years. And he said huh. about Jago when Jago was coming. I was just about to say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, even, couldn't even last a couple of hours. Right. Yeah, to wait for the uh, pottage. Yeah. I got a precept. Go ahead, bro. This is uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. It says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, mm -hmm. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And if you know, hey, Judah. You know, it's the head tribe of the, of, of the Israelites. You know, Judah is the so-called Negroes, man. Mm -hmm. All right. So it said it was evident that the Lord sprang out of Judah. You know, yeah. line, line, lineage going back, you know, all the way to David. And the, the guy mentioned that, too, in the interview. Like, there's certain uh, historical points 
or in in uh Yahweh Shai's line that leads back to a dark skinned nation, man. All right, it is it's, it's hella evidence out here, man. But um, the scriptures tell you uh, that our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh -huh. well, who had a big part in destroying our people for the lack of knowledge? Esau, Edom, man. All right, because they got our people caught up into all this folly and bullshit that's going on that the nigga won't even take a few seconds out of his day to just look up or Google some, you know, and, and, and here it is at his hand, man, that is evident, you know, that the Lord is a dark in the nation. It's more advanced than how it used to be. I mean, exactly. I say they used to have to go to the library for everything. Mm -hmm. He did too at a certain point, whether he was in elementary, or middle school, or high school. But now you just got it at your fingertips on the phone. Man, this mad research out there that proves it. Matter of fact, a brother did a video today, uh, I think from GMS Vent. Saw the video from another brother, I think. He asked the AI. Oh, that was uh, uh, what Barack, color is the Barack, Jews? Barack Obama from there in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she went back. Well, the, the AI went back way to Roman times and, and, and described on how Jake looked. And he said it's black. What's right. Like, Right. Right. Yeah. He didn't have to do too much. He just asked, hey, Alexa, what color are the Jews? Something as simple as that. You know, right. Jake, Jake don't even Jake don't even give a damn at this point. Yeah. Cause it ain't it ain't beneficial to Jake to really figure out sit down and figure out what the color of the Lord is, man. Yeah, if it don't involve making money again at hoes, Jake don't really give a fuck. Jake, Jake yeah. wanna eat bread and play. Yeah. That's it. So uh, everybody's got any closing precepts? Nah. All right. So, uh, hey, man, with that, man, Lord willing you edify, man. You know, we come into a times where the Lord is going to make his appearance, man. Yeah. And you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you need to heed, take heed to the word, man. Because we keep coming out with you, you, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, especially you so-called Latinos, man. All right. <laughs> you, you caught up in that Cesare Borgia worship. When the Lord comes, man, don't have a heart attack, man. Yeah. So with that, hey, man, we want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yeah. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the true leaders of uh, Yashallah, and uh, peace, love, and salutation to all you brothers across the four corners of the earth, okay? The Israelite foreigners that scattered abroad, pushing his truth and true sincerity. To the next time, Lord willing, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.